Hey everybody on YouTube, how you doing today? It's Chris from Wicked Repairs. Uh, I just wanted to show you a little bit of what I'm working on here. I have a 1999 Yamaha XL1200 Wave Runner. Um, running poor, uh, only runs on choke well, shut off choke, it doesn't idle well, shuts off. Um, uh, so basically it needed a carb rebuild. Uh, these carburetors, if you're familiar with any carburetors but not a wave runner carburetor, are much more intricate than your typical carburetor that's on an ATV or motorcycle. Uh, the, this particular one is a three cylinder, so it has one carburetor per cylinder, and they have a fuel pump body on them. Uh, they have uh, what's called a pop off pressure that needs to be measured on these. Uh, that works on a spring on the needle valve. So basically as you apply throttle and vacuum is put into the carburetors, it takes a certain amount of pressure for the needle valve to open and it works on a little spring that's in there. Um, so what I'm going to do is kind of I'm going to turn the camera around, show you the carburetors. I've already been working on them. I've already gone through one of them. Um, I've gone basically halfway through another one where uh, I have already gone through it, cleaned it, so I have one completely assembled, one that's cleaned and is about to get assembled, and then I have one that's been untouched. Uh, so what I'm going to do is show you the open one, uh, explain, kind of go through the that carburetor so you can learn a little bit about it, and then when I open up the other one that's been uh, untouched so far, I will show you kind of what it looks like inside before I've disassembled them. Every single one of these so far, the two that I've taken apart, have all had water in it, stale fuel that basically looks like a jelly substance in it, uh, which is very common now, especially with the uh, with the ethanol and the fuel. Um, basically what happens with the ethanol in the fuel, it's like adding water basically to your fuel and it creates electrolysis inside the carburetors and uh, it just wreaks havoc. So um, yeah, I'm gonna flip you around explain uh, a little bit about this carburetor and then we'll move on to the next one all right so this is the carburetor that I have already rebuilt uh, gone through it cleaned it put all the new parts in um, I have a, another carburetor over here from an ATV I'll show you real quick that um, you know this typical type of carburetor that's pretty basic on like I said any ATV motorcycle um, stuff like that. These nine out of ten times can be taken off, cleaned, put back together without any parts or little to no parts. Um, the Wave Runner ones, however, they have all these different gaskets, diaphragms. Um, you can see, I have this still on there. Uh, those parts all need to be replaced. It's super important that whenever you wait or open up a Wave Runner carburetor you have a rebuild kit and replace every single part on these. Um, if there's any type of air leak on these, the machine will not run right. Um, you will have lots of issues. So, basically, this piece here has got these little check valves. I've already replaced these. So it's got little check valves inside here. Uh, those should always be replaced when you're doing a carburetor rebuild on a wave runner. Uh, they have a little rubber grommet and you have to push them out from this side and put the check valve back in push the new grommet in usually the carburetor kits they have all new check valves all new grommets new gaskets i mean everything you need um, so this part of the carburetor here is where the diaphragm would go so you got that's your seat in there where the needle valve would go so the needle valve is right here and the needle valve sits on this little piece here and it sits in here with a pin and bolt and the spring goes inside this hole here so as the pressure is built up the will apply pressure on the needle valve and that spring is what allows it to have the proper pressure when you test these you must seal them up apply air to them and the air will pop at, um, pop the needle valve at a certain pressure to allow the fuel to flow through. Um, 
So it is important to make sure you check that, make sure that it is popping at the proper pressure. Always make sure you have the right spec because different carburetors have different pop-offs. And it is important to make sure that all three of these carburetors have the same pop-off pressure in the same spec. If they're all different and you're applying throttle slowly on this thing, taking off, and this middle carburetor pops off before this one does, and then this first carburetor pops off last, it's going to be very rough um, throttle transition. It's not going to be smooth. So there's also this little piece. So you have a gasket here. You have your jets here. That's your pilot jet or idle jet. And that is your main jet. Your pilot, your pilot jet or idle jet, typically what it runs is about 0 to 3,000 RPMs. And then your main jet takes over after that. Pilot jet always has fuel flowing through it. But your main jet on open throttle is what really supplies the more fuel that you need. So this particular one, there's this little gasket that goes on the bottom here. And then this body goes there. And there's a little check valve inside here. These check valves must always be replaced. And if you see it has little dots there, that check valve needs to be lined up in between those little dots. So that part goes there. There's two bolts that hold here. You have to put this on first. Then you put on the needle valve assembly here. I'm going to do this after, but I'm just explaining it now. And then right here would be this diaphragm. This is the old one that I took off. I have a new one over here. You can see this is basically old, some of the parts that are inside here. This is all stuff that needs to be replaced on the, this carburetor. So, and that is just for one carburetor. You need three kits, one for each one. So this goes on here. And the cover goes over here and this apply as you have vacuum this diaphragm will push on the arm of the needle valve where the spring is and when it reaches that pressure which this one I believe let me check the pop-off pressure is 75 psi so when this reaches 75 psi of pressure on that diaphragm it's gonna push down on the arm of that needle valve and pop the needle valve up. Um, the best way to test them, you need to seal up all the ports, except for the one in port that goes into that. And uh, you slowly have to apply pressure um, in, you know, put pressure in it. And when it reaches that 75 PSI, it should pop this. And what I do personally, and everybody probably does them a little different, I like to spray a little bit of WD-40 on them and have a little uh, valve and as I'm given a little bit of air when it reaches 75 psi that will go and it'll pop up and the WD-40 kind of just helps with seeing that it's popping off properly because it will shoot it out a little bit. So definitely watch your eyes have eye protection on uh, when you do that that way you don't get WD-40 all in your your face and eyes and mouth and then on this side you're going to have a fuel filter that goes in here. 100% very important to make sure that that fuel filter gets replaced. This is the new fuel filter. It's very simple. Just push it in and that's it. But those always have sand in it, coagulated fuel, stale fuel, whatever. So that goes on there. You can see this shape here. And there's going to be a gasket that goes in there. This is the old gasket. I have the new one next to me. but. The old gasket, with the, or rather the new gasket, this would sit here. Then you have these two pieces that are also going to go on there. So this will go down there. This other piece will go on there. I have them backwards, actually. And um, put these pieces on there. And you can see it has... Sorry, put the camera. You can see it has a little cutout where the... Uh, where the fuel filter is going to go. So that would go there, the gasket would go first, then this piece, and then this piece, and you can see it has actually a round section here, and the carburetor is round over here, so you always want to make sure you line them up right. And then the fuel pump body is what this would be called, and you see it has a little inlet there, it's going to match up there, it's pretty easy. And then you're going to have this part that has a black gasket and then a clear gasket. 
and there's another round o-ring that goes here and then this piece goes on here um, it is also very important one thing I've always done over the years with these is when you put that fuel pump body on and I highly recommend this because like I said you do not want any air leaks inside this I'll get that off after um, these are the long bolts that go into this part that hold that fuel pump body on and what I always do is take a little bit of this Yama bond for motorsports and I put it on the thread of these bolts because I cannot tell you how many times when I first started doing these carburetors that I would thread these in with the fuel pump bodies in and go to pressurize the carburetor and the leak that I have would come up through these threads because it would squeeze out a little bit through here and it would come up through these threads and you would have a leak you don't want any leaks so make sure you put a little sealant on here um, on, on all four bolts of course just a little bit enough to seal it doesn't have to be you don't have to paint them on but you know a little bit of sealant on those bolts put them in that will ensure that if there is any type of leak around these gaskets that those bolts will keep it from or the the yama bond will keep it from leaking up through those bolts um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish up with this carburetor I've already cleaned it gone through it it was real bad scraped all kinds of stuff off uh, I'm going to put this back together now and then when I take this one apart I'm going to open it up and I'm going to show you what that looks like inside um, this one is slightly different than the other two because this one actually has an accelerator pump on it um, I mean it's not a huge difference it's the same exact carburetor except it has an accelerator pump on it um, so I'm gonna, when I take that apart I'll show you uh, what it looks like inside and we'll see uh, together the water and stale fuel and I'll show you what creates uh, some of the issues in these before I finish putting this back together, I also failed to mention I want to show you right behind here, behind this fuel line, if you move this right here, and then on the opposite side right here, you see that little silver flathead screw. So this is a low speed jet, and that one is a high speed jet. That's um, what they call them. It's not a jet like the pilot jet or main jet that has a hole in it that fuel flows in but what that does is um, when you open that up or basically what you would do is you would lightly seat these all the way in and then turn them out to a certain spec um, each one of these carburetors has a different spec where the um, center one <clears throat> excuse me the center one would be um, on the low speed jet would be about seven eighths of a turnout and the high speed jet would be one and one eighth. Uh, the rear carburetor, which is um, this one with the accelerator pump, um, that one would be one and one eighth turns out on the low speed, and one and three eighths turns out on the high speed. Uh, and the front one would be seven eighths of a turnout on the uh, low speed, and one and a quarter on the high speed. So it's important to know those specs, and it's important important to remove these screws when you do these carburetors and you clean through them uh, you want to spray carburetor cleaner through them um, and you also want to put compressed air through them just to make sure there's no debris in there but if you fail to take out these screws and you do everything else you're going to do this most likely for nothing um, because basically if there is stuff inside of that idle circuit and you don't take out that low speed screw and you start spraying stuff inside that circuit to clean it and there's debris in there it's going to push against that screw head and then when it fills up with fuel all that stuff is going to come back and it's going to go back into your carburetor again and you're going to have issues so always make sure you take out the low and high speed screws and always make sure that you lightly seat them if you put them too hard in um, then you could peen the tip of the screw over and uh, basically um, it's such a minute uh, turns out, you know, being seven eighths of a turn out um, that if you drive it in too hard and then turn it out, then it has like a little bevel that could happen to it. And that seven eighths of a turn out could easily be one turn out and make a big difference on performance. So 
always just lightly seat them and then turn them out to spec. Always make sure you remove them. There's a spring on them and a little O-ring to help keep the seal. Um, and, and basically that allows air in so that you have your proper fuel air mixture on your low and high speed screws so that this machine is always running at the proper stoichiometric fuel to air ratio that it should have. So just wanted to point that out. Um, all I did on this one so far was um, you know, start putting some stuff back together. So um, I'm almost done with this one and then I'm going to go on to the next one and we'll see you then. All right, so I have these two all set and done. I've loosened up the screws on this fuel pump body on this last carburetor. And we're going to pop this off together so that you can see what it looks like and we can see what kind of uh, nastiness is inside of here. So you take those off, pop off the fuel pump body. And this is actually one of the better ones, but you can see all this stuff here is all stale fuel that's inside there. And that is where you have a lot of your issues. If you look at that, that's all water. All those air bubbles inside there, are, they're actually water bubbles, but all the bubbles inside here is all water. See this yellower, more yellow stuff is definitely fuel, but there's a lot of water. See that? That's water all inside this carburetor. So look at that right there. It's all coagulated fuel that's inside of there. And that's all the stuff that makes this run terrible. A lot of dirt and sand inside there, which happens often. This is the fuel filter I was talking about and it has some junk in it it's not too bad for some reason this carburetor was a little better than all the others but you can see that stuff that just came out of that fuel filter all that stuff's going to restrict fuel flow you can see it inside there and uh, it's not going to run good so it's one of these in every kit for each carburetor so always replace that I always replace this gasket, of course, and all the gaskets. And um, so I just wanted to show you that. I'm going to take the rest of this part, clean it through properly, and uh, we'll see you probably when I'm done getting through with uh, cleaning all this stuff. And the next time I'll see you is probably when we're putting the carburetors back onto the machine. So I popped the fuel pump body off, and I just want to show you this real quick actually before uh, I continue so I pulled this gasket off look at that Ugh. looks like caviar inside there that is nasty so all that stuff is all stale fuel and it's all definitely due to ethanol and partially to do with uh, all the water that's mixed in with this fuel so got to clean all that up make sure you take care of everything on these carburetors because if any of that stuff gets stuck in there it will wreak havoc right away. See, I just flipped it over and that chunk fell out. So, just wanted to show you that before I continue. So I wanted to show you the carburetors all assembled because it does have this intake plate that goes here. It's held on by six Allen screws there. And then where this mount is, there's two 10 millimeter bolts here and then there's one that's down inside there. So you're gonna need um, you know a long 10 millimeter socket or a short socket with an extension um, always inspect all your fuel lines of course and put new zip ties on them or you could wire tie them up with safety wire um, zip ties are fine that's how they do it from factory and uh, I've just replaced all of these zip ties because last thing you want is a fuel line popping off um, I put one on here which Typically there is, but there was not on this when I just did this. Um, there are gaskets that go in between here and between this plate. And then this other big gasket is going to go on top of here. That's going to go um, in between this and the motor. So uh, I just wanted to show you that and, you know, just point out that you should always replace these zip ties. Um, you do have to pop these off to separate the carbs, so now you've weakened up the strength of that zip tie. It's important to put them back on. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to show you here is 
the adjustment rods for your throttle valves. Um, basically you have two rods, one silver, one is black, and they just simply snap into place. You see this, it's got a kind of a beveled piece that goes right into here. And the silver one is going to go on the top side here. And you simply, you gotta do it firm, and when you pop them off, you usually use like a flathead screwdriver and give it a little pressure and just be careful so they don't break, of course, but give it a little pressure there. That one's on. Over to the middle one, you see where that is. And I kinda squeeze and give a little wiggle. That one's on, and then one more. So now that's on, and then this one is going to pop in the other side. So I'm probably going to need both hands, so I'll do this off camera, but uh, just pop these on, and, uh, you know, and then you got that all back together. So once I put that other uh, rod on here, um, these, uh, these carburetors are all done, and they're ready to go and ready to be installed in the machine. So this is the machine. Um, I popped off the filler neck to the fuel tank. It took a little fuel sample and there was definitely some water in the fuel as I uh, expected, which is pretty common with these, but um, you know, uh, keeping fresh fuel in it as full as possible and stabilizing is the best thing you can do. So took fuel out, put fresh fuel in with stabilizer, um, about ready to put in the carbs. Uh, this is where the exhaust would go and the carbs bolt right in the side down here by the motor and the intake there. Um, all that blue stuff is oil basically that came out of the lines that come off the carbs. So um, what I'm going to do now, um, just finished putting some other parts back together and hoses and um, it also needs power valve cables. This is where the cables are and they are both broken. So I do have a set of cables so I'm going to be swapping the cables out. They run all along here, all the way to the front, to the motor that runs the cables. So I'm going to be putting those in, um, and then popping the carbs in. And I'm also running a new reverse cable, because the reverse cable is all frayed. It still works, but it's all frayed, and it's only a matter of time before those strands break and it doesn't work anymore. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to start popping these in, and... Uh, Get the rest of the stuff ready and together to run, and then I will uh, turn on the camera. It's time to run it. Okay, so hopefully you can see this pretty good. Um, before I go any further here, basically, and put the air box and exhaust on, um, I just wanted to show you a few things. Um, so we got the carburetors bolted up. Right down here is the choke lever, uh, the choke cable. So. As I pull the choke, you see it open, the flaps close, and then they open up. Um, <clears throat> always make sure there's a little bit of free play in there. So you don't want to pull the cable, I'm already pulling it right now, and then it engages. So you want to make sure you have a little bit of free play in there. Same thing with the throttle. Um, and of course, you have the throttle cable here on this side of the pulley. And then this side of the pulley is your oil pump cable. So as you apply throttle, which you could see a little bit of free play I have there in the throttle cable, you have the throttle, you pull it open, and it opens up the oil pump. Um, so always make sure there's a little bit of slack, a little bit of free play inside that uh, cable. A rule of thumb, uh, kind of like three to five millimeters of free play. I mean, a little more is okay, maybe like six or seven millimeters, but uh, you know, anything less than two or three millimeters will be too tight. So you always want to make sure you have a little bit of free play inside the uh, the cable. And a good place to check that, or when you check it, would be right up at the, at the throttle itself. So right here, this little gap, that's kind of where you want to look at. Um, we have a fuel line that feeds, that comes in here, that we have to connect line here for vacuum, another line here for vacuum, and then there's a line in the very front here, might be tough to see, but this one is also a vacuum hose. Um, right here's your engine idle speed knob, see the little star black knob there. Um, typically when you run these uh, on a hose or out of the water on a trailer, um, 
the idle might be a little higher than when it's in the water because of the impeller spinning in the water with resistance. So sometimes when you run these on the hose on land and then you take them to the water, um, you may have to adjust that, um, especially once the motor gets really warm out there. Um, sometimes you gotta bring it up a little bit, that way it's not a low idle. Um, you know, I always do the best I can. Uh, of course, you also have um, oil lines. So you got a oil line here, right here, and in the front right here. So you have the three oil lines coming in for each cylinder. Always, uh, when you take these off and you do these carburetors, right in front of that idle adjust knob is your oil pump bleed screw. Always open that up and bleed the oil pump to make sure there's no air inside the lines. Um, very important, so always do that. Um, just to point out, when I did do these carburetors and you know I took them apart and put them back on, there is four five millimeter Allen screws, two on top of each other here and two on top of each other here. Um, those four were actually all missing off of these. Um, luckily I have a, um, a tackle box that's full of stainless hardware from these motors and different Yamaha uh, uh, motors so I was able to come up with the proper bolts, the exact bolts that go in there as a matter of fact and put those in. Um, they make a tremendous amount of difference on the, uh, on the you know, mounting force. There is a bolt right here and then another bolt kind of at an angle on the other side, 10 millimeter bolts, so there's two on the carburetors, one here, one here on each carburetor. There's another one there, another one here, and then the front one's the same way. So you have six bolts there, and then you have four bolts here. So always make sure that all of those bolts get on there. Um, just wanted to point that stuff out um, just as a tip and you know just to make sure that if you ever have one of these off you can refer back to my video to see oh geez where did this go where did that go well that's where it goes um, yeah so you can see I cleaned up all the oil off the hull I wasn't gonna leave that there. there's a little bit of residue I'm gonna wipe that down too you can see a rag down there so um, definitely don't like to leave a mess in these hulls um, they, they will stain the hull so always try to clean them up don't ever be afraid to wash down your wave runner motor and actually it's a great idea uh, great idea especially if you're running in salt water to take the seats off when you're done wash the motor down spray with silicone spray or something to keep it protected leave the seats off for a little while and let, let it air dry uh, I also found because these two bolts in the front were not here when it was dropped off and this piece was down in the hull. Um, and that is basically part of, you can see this big washer I'm spinning in right now, because of course it's not clamped down with the bolt. Um, this is a broken piece of what this is. I don't know where the rest of it is. I did not find any more, but I did find this one piece in here from whoever previously worked on this. Um, leaving something like this inside the hull or any hardware, if you ever drop anything in here, it's super important to make sure that any debris or bolts or parts or anything like that comes out of this hull because if this thing gets wedged into the motor or a bolt gets wedged into the motor in the hull on this thing um, the fiberglass hull on these is, is stronger than the engine block on this so if it gets wedged in there and you're vibrating and you're running and this thing starts moving it's going to go through your engine block before it goes through the hull and puts a hole in your hull. So, um, not that you want any of them to happen, but uh, you definitely don't want something like this uh, putting a hole in your motor and blowing a motor because then you're replacing a motor. So, I found this one piece, didn't find anything else. So, hopefully, whoever worked on it before got the rest out. Um, the only thing I have left to do on these carburetors basically is kind of zip tie some of these lines together so they're nice and secure there is a main zip tie that goes right in here I don't know how well you can see oh there we go it's a little better see there's a little hole in this bracket there and there's a hole back here and there's a zip tie that goes here it holds all of these oil and fuel lines together so I'm gonna put a zip tie there I'm gonna put one here put one here 
Then we're going to slip the air box on, bolt that on. It has six uh, 10 millimeter bolts that bolted on. And there's also little gaskets on that air box, um, the air box cover. Um, make sure you replace those if you have the gaskets. If not, they're typically reusable and okay, but um, make sure they are in their proper place. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to bolt that on, bolt on the exhaust. Um, I still have to just replace the power valve cables and then we'll be ready to fire it up. So I got everything all back together here with the exception of those two front bolts that I do not have to put in there. And there's a mount that goes down here that I did not install um, because the hardware is really just horrendous. It is good and tight the way it is. I'll put everything back together back here. I have my booster pack um, connected to the battery. And I've already primed the fuel system and got it running for a couple seconds because uh, uh, it takes like two to three minutes to fill up all three of these carburetors and get the fuel line all you know filled up and stuff. So um, I did already start it. I'll show you real quick. is right up so these things can run about two three minutes with no water to them um, before having an overheat warning not necessarily an overheat but a warning that will sound um, so I have the hose attachment here I'm going to attach the hose and run it on the water for a little bit but that's basically it and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video maybe you learned a thing or two and uh, see you on the next one thank you very much